Let, hi, John. Hi, David. Hi, everybody. And to everybody watching, uh, we're so glad you're here with us uh, at Suicide the Ripple Effect webinar, How to Be a Captain. Um, so first of all, uh, I'd like to just tell you why, uh, why I began a journey of making a film in the first place. You know, Greg DeCherry and I are the two co-directors and producers. We both have bipolar disorder, amongst the many other issues. <laughs> and, 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 you know, um, we, we got together eventually and thought this would be something that we want to do that's very special for the mental health field, for, for the mental health world, for suicide prevention, but more importantly, for the idea of hope. We wanted to share a film about suicide that was really about hope. And that's why we called it Suicide the Ripple Effect, because it's the ripple effect of, of yes, the devastating nature of suicide, but more importantly, the ripple effect of hope caused by storytellers like myself and Greg, uh, pardon me on that, caused by myself and Greg, um, uh, the ripple effect of people like us in the field that are working all over the world to make change in suicide prevention and brain health and mind health, uh, to people like David Covington of AAS and John Draper of the National Lifeline, we all have been working so hard um, in our fields, but what about making a movie that could do the same on a global scale. That is what we set out to do uh, and make a film uh, that was beautiful, uh, moving, caring, and compassionate, and that didn't end with people walking out of the theater being sad and depressed, but ended with people walking out of the theater going, I can actually make a difference, not only in my life, but in the life of so many others. So that's why we made the film, because we care about you and we want to make sure you have an ability through the power of media to change lives. Uh, and so on that note, um, Greg, unless you have anything else to add, I'd like to get right into our, our, our first two panelists, John and, and David. That's fantastic. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Um, I, did we say who was going to go first? And I want to, well, I know you guys. Yeah, I think I think the wonderful and magnificent. Uh, not that, that that describes both of them, but uh, but uh, <laughs> the one with the long, longer hair, Mr. Uh, John Drake. <laughs> For those who don't know, he's the uh, director of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, which is uh, a network of over 160 crisis call centers that are really on the front lines of of helping people be here and helping people who who love people that have uh, challenges be here. And so we're very grateful and excited that John's not only in the film but a big supporter and. Uh, and champion and and John and David are kind of like the, the the responsible adults in the room, so to speak. Uh, with, with, you know, keep us in line. Now I'm going to have to change my behavior. <laughs> oh no, thank you, Greg. Um, I think you wanted me to go first because I thought I might leave earlier, so I, I'll stay for as long as I can. It's up to you guys to make this really interesting, though. I think. Uh, but let me say this, though. I, I loved hearing what you were just saying, Kevin, about people leaving the theater with this sense of hope. Uh, there's, there's this thing called the Papageno effect. I know you know what that is. A lot of people don't know what that is. The Papageno effect is, is the opposite of what's called the Werther effect. The Werther effect is, 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 was really based on this, the character of the sufferings of Ben Werther. This was a, a book that was published you know, in, the, in the 18th century about this uh, uh, France of this young, this young suffering person who, who killed himself. He was a writer who killed himself, and that and that that, that led other people as kind of a contagion of hopelessness. That where people said, "Well, if Werther would kill himself and feeling so miserable, then, then maybe I should too." Then there's this thing called the Papageno effect, which was basically based on this. It's a uh, in, in Mozart's magic flute. There's a character named Papageno, who is 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 at the end of it. He's 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 so mourning the loss of his wife and who died, and he believes that he there's more hope for him. And then comes along uh, the, these, these visions of his children who are saying to him, "Hold on, hold on," um, and 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 said, "We love you. We want you to. You, you need to stay alive." And then suddenly a vision of his his wife comes along and says, I'm still here for you. And suddenly he feels a great deal of hope. And the Papageno effect was that when back when they when this Mozart's magic flute was shown, people would walk out of the theater feeling, Papageno made me feel so good, so hopeful, and it created this contagion of hope. Well what we have found is that this thing, 
called the Papageno effect, the contagion of hope, has been coined by an Austrian researcher who's found that stories of hope and recovery, such as yours, when they are gotten out into the public and people see those, it actually reduces the suicide rate. People begin to, to believe that, that if Kevin can get through this, I can too. And, and this Papa Gino effect is, can only happen through the mass media. Kevin, you used to go around and you still go around so beautifully telling people about your story. It makes, has such an impact. But when we can actually have it on film, it can have this force multiplier effect where people can be touched all over the world in places that you will never be able to reach if you tried to in your lifetime. So to us, that is what a ripple effect is, is that as you drop this film into the ether, so to speak, it's gonna have a ripple effect across people, families, communities, and cultures worldwide. And I'm excited to be a part of it, sir. And, and John, uh, can you tell us briefly about your experience being in the film and how you feel uh, the film is going to help other people uh, and, and be a safe picture for suicide preventers and, and, their, and their families? A lot of people talk about stigma, you know, and I, I'm not wild about that word, but I, I, what I'm really, I think there's the shame, there's discrimination, there's just a, a fear of what, what's going to happen if I talk about my experience. And I think what, what this film shows is that, you know, talking about your experience in the way that you talk about it is healing. It's healing for you and it's healing for other people. And, and that as we learn that, you know, you know, Kevin, you, me, Greg, David, none of us, none of us are, are even close. We're all a work in, pro in progress. But if we can openly talk about our experiences and what we've learned from them and how we're still learning from them in a way that, that, that's fearless, um, other people can do the same. And as we all begin to talk more openly about our experiences, the more connected we are all are going to be. And that is healing. And in fact, we know that that's what prevents suicide, people being more connected. So you're modeling throughout this film. I mean, every person you talk to in this film, uh, well beyond me and David, but everybody, you can just see the effect that you have on them. Uh, as they, they begin to talk about their experiences very openly. And they say, you know, yeah, I've been there too. Or when I saw, when I saw you in the water, it made me feel this. Or, you know, it, it is, it, it, it's really kind of a, it's, it's, a, it's a, a beautiful bloodletting, so to speak, of people not only just talking about suffering, but talking about healing, most importantly, and how we can rise above it together. And I think it's crucial. One of the main messages of the film is that, is that with hard work, we can find recovery and find that healing that is so crucial to our ability to continue. Uh, John, let us know if you want to say anything else. But no, I was, I was going to just say uh, that that is another thing I love about your talking about your experience. Because, you know, often people will say, yeah, you know, Kevin, uh, you know, and, and a lot of people are like, you know, I, I went through this suicidal experience and I have recovered. No. Uh, your story, Kevin, is so clearly one that is the human story, which is, we're all a work in progress. We are all recovering. Um, no, I still have moments where I'm thinking about suicide. No, I still have moments where I'm suffering. But you know what? Um, these are the things that buoy me and keep me going. And, and I want to talk about those. So, so that I think is, is, is a, a really unique thing about you and your story is you're not talking about a person who's recovered. You talk about the process of recovery and recovering still living in recovery, embodying that recovery every single day, taking it one day at a time, one step at a time, and they're all baby steps. Thank you very much, John. We're so glad you're in this film, and we're so glad you're a part of the, the movement as a, as, a, as a larger role in all that you do. We're so thankful. And we're going to bring it right on to the, the great and the amazing David Covington. Uh, David, we'd love to hear from you, your thoughts on your participation in the film, your thoughts on how it can better the field of mental, behavioral, mind health, and suicide prevention, and your thoughts of, of why it's such an important message of hope. David, please take it away. Yeah. Thanks so much, Kevin, and thanks, John. You know, I had the privilege of meeting John Draper uh, in 2000, late 2004, when we first started having discussions. And I, 
I'd been in the field. John had been in the field for decades. We'd been clinically trained in the field. Uh, we'd been leaders in the field. And uh, looking back, I realize now that um, uh, almost everything I understood was wrong. At the, 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 the cataclysmic change in the field that occurred in 2006 to me uh, and I think when we go forward, we'll look back. It's been 11 years now since these changes, but two things fundamentally rocked our understanding. And for one, it was Thomas Joyner's book, Why People Die by Suicide, which got into some real stories, uh, but it didn't bring it to life in the way that the Bridge documentary did. And the first time that I saw Kevin Hines and heard, heard your story, Kevin. And if we look back before 2005, 2006, when we had a discussion of suicide in our society, it was about death. It was about those that had tragically succumbed, uh, those who had, had perished. And that was the only dialogue that we really had going in any meaningful fashion. And clinically, for those of us who had training, we were given, it was never quite laid out this way, but if, as I look back, what we were essentially taught was that there are two different kinds of people. There are people who talk about suicide, and we had an insight to their struggle. And they're the people who die by suicide that we said were a completely different group. And I believed that, and I had worked, uh, uh, and the, I remember seeing the film, Kevin, that very first time, and it just like, just tore my beliefs right down the middle because it just, none of it was compatible with what uh, you described. And uh, John, about that same time, we started meeting other individuals like Kevin, Eduardo Vega and Terry Wise and um, Heidi Bryan and uh, Quincy Lazine and a host of others, Desiree Stage. And, uh, you know, Kevin, so this hope that John referenced, this religion of hope, um, is, is embodied in individuals who are willing to create a social movement to come out and have the courage to talk about uh, their, their pain in a way that we would talk about other issues. So it's just phenomenally important for me and the double entendre of the ripple effect, which before 2005, we only would have talked about the death. And even that bridge documentary does talk about that side of the ripple effect, the impact on bystanders and family members and friends. But the untapped ripple effect is this ongoing, what we're seeing, this viral spread of individuals coming out telling their truth, talking about their own lived experience, talking about their pain, but also talking about who they've become as a result of that pain, that special, unique uh, creation that would not exist. Kevin Hines sharing all this with us would not exist had it not been for that pain uh, that, that you experienced. So I think the opportunity to tell this positive story. And then one more thing, it's not just the hope. This, this, this movie is also about the rail. Uh, and that rail, while there's a very specific rail that is being built and will be completed for the Golden Gate Bridge, whether we're in healthcare or in schools or, or we're dealing with other unsafe places, there are a host of similar endeavors where we move from half measures to going all the way to create safe environments and, and the kind of support that people need. So this is a rich film. Uh, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be like when the Bridge documentary came out, there was a lot of a concern about you know is it triggering and, and safety around this uh, I, I, I don't think this is like that uh, that there's going to be the same kind of dialogue but I, I thought the same thing about that film that I think about this that that film had a powerful potential to change lives and impact people's thinking and this one is going to do it in a very different way in beginning to take that hope and actionable um, steps to move forward out in a very strong fashion and it's going to encourage others to have that dialogue with people close to them and for a few people it's going to encourage them to become national leaders and to continue this uh, movement that is changing the dialogue and making it safer for others to talk about their pain so i love it i was so thankful to be have the opportunity to be in it and of course i've worked with greg and seen his leadership over the last decade of the the change that he's made so you two coming together around this is just tremendous uh, the movie is, is it's, it's emotional, it's, uh, it's touching, it's thoughtful, uh, it's humorous. I, I, I really loved it and so appreciate the opportunity to be in it. You and me and your team sitting uh, outside of that harbor in Sydney 
and taking that film back a year ago now almost uh, uh, was a great opportunity, and I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing the release. Thank you very oh, much, thank David. You, we're, we're really grateful that you're here with us. Uh, one of the things I'd like to address before we get to you, Jake, and Jake is our man from Gather Films. We'll be talking soon. And I, and I, oh, go well, go ahead, Kevin. You want to say something? Yeah, I, I, I could. Just really quick, I want to I want to address a question that is on a lot of people's minds. I know we're not we're waiting for questions later. I just want when John are, and, and David are here personally, I want to make sure we address this question now uh, before before they have to step off. Um, the question is this. Uh, can anyone touch upon how this movie adheres to safe messaging guidelines, particularly depression and suicide prevention from SAMHSA and the Entertainment Industries Council? Is there a possible screening to assess safe messaging for particular communities? I think that's going to be something we hear a lot, and I think we need to at least talk about it here before we get into anything else. Yeah, and I mean, just to, just to touch on that my, myself, and that, you know, that's one of the reasons really why you know, we wanted to have John and David here with us today and have having some professionals who are really the leaders in this field, be able to take a look at it and being able to share their experience. You know, unfortunately, we're not, you know, able to mass screen the film at, at this point, but that, you know, we, we have had this film vetted by the, by the elites of the clinical realm of suicide prevention and mental health, two of whom we've sitting, sitting right here uh, with. So, I mean, I don't know if David and yeah, John want to add anything. David, do you have anything to, to say upon that? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, let, let's, let's distinguish a little bit between safe messaging and the intent of this film. I mean, first of all, yes, uh, this, there's nothing unsafe about this messaging. I, the, the intent of safe messaging, by the way, is, is, is to prevent some uh, media related to suicide from creating more suicides. It's, it's, it's to prevent harm. The intention of this film is actually just the opposite, or not the opposite, it's, it's, it's actually to prevent suicide. That's really what it's about. And, and, and so the, the framework of safe messaging, while this absolutely is safe, it's, it's, not even, it's not even about that. It's not about, we have to be careful here. It's, it's yes, we are careful, but what is really clear in this film to me is that well, okay, let, let's just review how it is safe. It, it's not focusing on, on, on here's, how you, here's how you kill yourself. So it doesn't describe methods that are going to kill yourself. So much as it is, how do you recover from an attempt and how do you recover from suicidal thoughts? How do you get through them? Uh, when there's a, 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 a focus on sensationalizing suicide, uh, glorifying suicide, this is not glorifying suicide. In fact, it's glorifying recovery from a suicide attempt. In many ways, how we can get there. It's not even glorifying it. Actually, there's nothing glorious about recovery, as, as, as Kevin points out. And I think that's, that's the beauty of this. What I was mentioning earlier is that it's a struggle. I think it's honorable, and it is glorious to share your story in a way that, that is so, so incredibly vulnerable. That's glorious, but it's not glorifying you know necessarily suicide in a way that in any ways like I, I think I want to kill myself I think what we really need to be focusing very much in our media is as I was saying the Papa Gino effect is creating stories of is sharing stories of positive coping through suicidal crises and, and as people see those when and they're exposed to those in the media it reduces suicide. In this Austrian study, it compared messaging that was unsafe in the media, or actually looking at various messages about suicide, found that only one type of message reduced the suicide rate among people who were exposed to these, these stories. And they were stories like Kevin's of hope and recovery. So I, I, I just think the framework is a little off here. We need to be talking about what are, what's the messages media-wise that can actually prevent suicide. And this is exactly what I think this film is going to do. I believe it's going to save lives. Thanks, John. Thank you very much, John. Um, <clears throat> so I just wanted just to, to lead into uh, to Jake here from G Gather Films, but uh, I just want to say how I met Kevin a little bit. So about eight years ago, I, I worked still for Magellan Health for my day job. I'm the youth empowerment director there and was working in, in Arizona when David was fairly, fairly new to Magellan then. And 
he had wanted to screen this film, The Bridge. And he had, uh, you know, he had arranged uh, a theater, booked a theater, we booked a AV company and, uh, and did this great screening, which was the first time that I had gotten to see uh, Kevin's story. Myself being in, in recovery and got into the field via peer support after about 12 different hospitalizations and times in jails and rehabs and halfway houses. And, and I found recovery through the 12 steps and then through becoming a peer support specialist. And so that was kind of the realm that I had brought to this. And then Kevin was in this film was really the first, you know, first time I had seen somebody actually in a film that was really talking about kind of some of these, these same, uh, same issues. And so uh, probably about a year later, I met Kevin at a conference, in an alternatives conference, and we had gotten to be friends over the years and, you know, had this passion for film and had been talking about film. My kind of film career, I, after college, worked in LA and had a company in New Orleans uh, and was derailed because of my own mental illness of, of repeated, you know, hospitalizations and manic episodes and whatnot. And so now getting to do this thing with Kevin is, 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 has been, you know, really amazing to kind of make that bridge. And one of Kevin and I's goals from the beginning is, and I run a national uh, youth program and impact a lot of youth, but as John was saying, there's only so far we can reach as individuals, both through this media, through this film and other types of media, we can take these messages of hope and recovery and share them, you know, really across the globe. And really a big part of this is inspiring other people. And it's already happened so much to do the same and giving people, other people who have stories, a platform to do the same. And the really cool thing about hooking up with Gather, which we're going to get into uh, now, which is a, a film distribution uh, company that Jake's going to share about is this gives us an opportunity for people to see these films kind of similar to what David did with the bridge, but that was a pretty costly, you know, a pretty costly endeavor with renting the facility and renting the, the AV and all that kind of stuff. Well, through Gather and this really innovative technology that you're about to hear about, it gives people the opportunity to screen this film in a real live theater, uh, great sound, great picture with your friends and, and not have to put out, you know, put out any uh, cash out of your pocket. And it can be a fundraiser, which you're going to hear about too. So we're excited to, uh, to be working with, uh, with Gather Films and we'll turn it over to, uh, to Jake here. Thank you, Greg. I, I really appreciate that. Um, we're really excited to, to get the film going. Um, for everyone, I'm the president of Gather Films. Uh, we're an independent film distribution company uh, and specifically work with a lot of films uh, like Suicide the Ripple Effect and, and putting together comprehensive release strategies for films where there's more to the story than just the film itself. And, and we really want to empower and, and work with and really foster opportunities for the greater movement to take hold as, as Kevin and Greg and, and John David have, have mentioned. So what I'm gonna quickly do is just pull up a short little presentation that kind of breaks down how theatrical on demand works, which is the way that uh, everyone will be able to see the film. And uh, hopefully that will help answer a lot of the questions that I know everyone has about how they're going to be able to see the film in their city. So what we're doing is releasing the film via a platform called Theatrical On Demand. What this is is sort of, if you think of it like Kickstarter or uh, crowdsourcing screenings of the film <clears throat> to your local movie theater. So everyone in any part of the country has the opportunity to bring the film to their local theater. And the key is that instead of having to buy, you know, go to the theater, rent out the theater and pay for all the stuff to secure it or to have to deal with the ticketing and getting a projector. All of that is handled by Gather Films and our platform. So all you have to do is sign up to host a screening and then help spread the word to get people to reserve tickets and the screening will happen. There's no upfront cost to bringing that screening to your city outside of just getting people to reserve their tickets in advance. So how does theatrical on demand work? What works is first, if you want to bring the film to your city, you have to sign up to become what we call a movie captain or a screening host. So at that, when you do that, you go to the Suicide the Ripple Effect website um, and the URL is at the bottom of this uh, presentation, but we'll also send out 
um, a link to everyone, a, a follow-up email that'll include a link to where you can go to sign up to request a screening. But if you go to suicide the ripple effect uh, dot com and slash USA screenings, there will be a button that says request a screening. And so clicking request a screening, uh, you will then be taken to a screening request form. And that form uh, allows you to basically it, it it geolocates you automatically and shows the movie theaters in your city that we have a partnership with and, and we work with thousands of theaters across the country, a lot of the big multiplexes and uh, you know, main theater chains and also you know, hundreds and hundreds of independent art house theaters. So as you can see, uh, there lists a few theaters and what you do is you pick the theater that you want to see the film in and then you pick the date uh, and the time you can choose between a matinee a uh, daytime screening or an evening primetime screening. Um, and really from there you submit that request and then that request goes into the theatrical on demand system and to gather films and we set up the screening with the theater. So one thing, there are gonna be certain people, you know, depending on where you live, that maybe a theater that you're looking for isn't showing up on the map or isn't showing up in the screening request form, in which case, then you just email the Gather Film support team and we have a, a lot of theaters that we work with or maybe there's a theater in your city that isn't listed and, and you have a relationship with them or you know of them and you want to be able to work with that theater, then we're, we want to help you bring the film to your city. So we'll accommodate and work with that theater even if it isn't showing up on the list. Um, but what we try to do is really drive you towards the most favorable, friendly theaters that can help get the screening up and make it as easy as possible. So once that request is submitted and goes into our system, you become the movie captain. So you're sort of the host, the owner of that screening. And we really need your support to help us get the word out about the film locally. So allowing people in to reserve tickets to the screening and to get people to find out. And what will happen is the screening will become a live event. So once you submit that request, uh, either right away um, the screening will be approved depending on the theater and you'll get a, a link in an email uh, to a web page, which is your event web page. For some theaters, it takes a little bit, uh, a little extra time because we have to talk to the theater and get their confirmation before we can set the screening up. So it just depends on the theater that you requested. Um, but we we try to do this as quick as possible because we really want your screen to get up and going uh, right away so you can start promoting the event and, and spreading the word. So as soon as that screening becomes live, you will get your screening webpage and it's at this page that you wanna share and you'll have a, your own sort of screening link where people can reserve their tickets. And what you see is for every screening, there's a minimum number of people that need to reserve tickets in advance in order for that screening to take place. So as you can see on this page, it says still needed to tip in 39. And that means that this screening needs 39 individuals to reserve tickets via this webpage uh, in order for that screening to happen. And if the, now if the, you don't hit that minimum number by the deadline, then the screening is canceled and nobody's charged anything. And so there's no risk, there's no cost to signing up and the screening can get going without, um, you, you can take a chance and try to make the event happen in your city. And, and if there aren't enough people, then you know, there are some other ways down the road where you'll still be able to host an event. But in terms of bringing it to a cinema and seeing it in theater with theatrical on demand, there's really, of no risk there's no downside to to trying to set up uh, a screening in your local movie theater so from there you know we really want to provide some just kind of examples and some information about um, what we call tipping the screening so that's hitting that minimum number of reservations in time uh, by the expiration deadline and um, then from there of course just promoting and, and ending up with a sold out movie theater the night of your screening um, so 
one of the kind of keys and and that we really try to stress at gather films and in our experience is is finding a co-captain uh, finding someone to collaborate with and and to work with and to help promote the event with you that really makes a big difference um, in terms of the overall success of the event um, so if you know individuals that that in or friends or family or maybe there's a local organization um, uh, that you want to partner with uh, bringing in people and really making it more of a community event will help elevate and, and make sure that your screening is successful. But at, by the time the screening actually happens, you, you'll be pretty amazed that you'll have a sold out theater and you know, hundreds of people will be there. And the overall impact of the event will be pretty incredible. And like I said, you, we really stress turning the screening into an event. Uh, we really believe that this isn't just another way to watch a film in a theater. This is something unique and something special that each community will really benefit from getting to, to have in their city. Um, another tip that we generally, we really try to stress is making a Facebook event. Um, that is, I think, still the, the most effective way to, to promote a screening and to, to tip a screening. Um, we have a lot of tools and materials available on the film's website, uh, so you don't have to kind of figure all this stuff out yourself. Um, but so including images and, and guides for creating a Facebook event to promote your screening. But we definitely think that you know once you get started and you sign up and you get your screening in the books, um, starting by creating a Facebook event to promote that screening really makes a big difference and will make it a lot easier down the road in terms of the likelihood that your screening is going to be successful. Um, and just a few things, Gather Films, uh, we've released a, a large number of films over the past six years. We've uh, facilitated thousands of, tens of thousands of screenings across the country and work with thousands of movie captains. And, and so we, we have polled and kind of talked to our past movie captains who've had a lot of success. And, and just, you know, a couple things that we saw that were really key indicators in terms of being a successful movie captain. It's not necessarily a matter of having the funds to, to pay for marketing stuff or having a you know, massive community and, or being a professional. It, it's really just someone who's passionate and determined and enthusiastic about the, the message and the film itself and really believes in the power of the film and, and what can happen when you bring a community together and get them to talk about these issues and, and talk about it in a different way and in a different setting. Um, you know, the more we see it, it's just, if you really just kind of get going and start spreading the word and, and really are, are excited and enthusiastic about the event and, and remind people a little persistence always helps, uh, your screening will be successful uh, in our experience. And so, like I mentioned, there's a lot of tools and materials that have been created uh, to make it really easy for you. We don't want, we want to minimize the work that you have to put into making the screening happen. So providing a lot of pre ready-made email messaging, images, flyers, things like that will really help make it as easy as possible for you to have a successful event. Um, one of the big things is when you sign up to host a screening, you will get access to your own what we call movie captain dashboard uh, and this dashboard is really important because it's a place where you can access all the different tools you can we have a private facebook group for all of the movie captains so everyone can communicate and connect with each other and share pictures of your events and share different ideas and images and things like that um, but you can access that that group via your movie captain dashboard um, you can do other things like if you want to have a table at the theater or you want to add in time for a Q&A or discussion or get a microphone, you can submit a request for that via the Movie Captain dashboard and then the Gather Films team will secure all of that so you can, like I said, incorporate things like a Q&A, really make a, the screening into a, a larger event. You can also do things like schedule a call with the Gather Films team uh, someone on our team, if you have questions about the logistics or about promoting your event, we have someone on our team who's available to talk to you 
uh, and so you can schedule a call from that dashboard. So that, that's a really important place to, to access and utilize a lot of materials uh, to help you be successful with your screening. Um, and then one, one last thing that I just wanted to bring up, and I know uh, everyone else is gonna bring this up as well, is one thing that we're able to do is, is help you turn your screening into a fundraiser. Um, this can be for a local organization or group, or, or it could be a national organization that you're supporting. Um, and, and what it is is you're able to incorporate an organization of your choice. Let's say if you're an individual hosting a screening and you partner with a local group, uh, you can make it so they will receive donations when, as, as a part of the screening. So you go to the toolkit where you see the arrow and this is in the movie captain dashboard and there's the purple tools button and there's a menu where you click fundraiser request. And that takes you to a form where you enter the information for the organization that you want to have listed uh, when people are as sort of the fundraiser or recipient for donations for your screening. And then when individuals go to purchase tickets to the screening, they are given the option to donate on top. In addition to their, their ticket, they're able to donate to that organization that you've selected. So in our experience, that, that really is a great way to raise money and, and sort of turn the screening into a fundraiser because you're kind of incorporating it at the point that people are purchasing their tickets. Um, and then, of course, you can also add in things like making a pitch for donations uh, at the night, the night of your screening um, from attendees. But this is something that we've built into our technology, into the ticketing system. So you can really, you know, like I said, make a, an event out of it and, and use the screening of the film in a local movie theater as a fundraiser. Awesome. So, yeah, so that, that's all the stuff from the, just the bare bones for theatrical on demand. And I think, uh, Greg, you want to take over? Yeah, sure. We'll just uh, <clears throat> kind of uh, build on a couple of the couple of things, and then we're gonna get into some uh, really really good stuff of having uh, a little sneak peek of some of the uh, film here. So bear with me. With the... So. Um, a couple of things, as, as Jake mentioned, we have uh, an awesome team. We've been really blessed that they've encountered a lot of individuals along the way who are in the film or, been, we, or who we've met through social media who are, who are part of the team now. So in addition to Jake's team that's really here to support the efforts, uh, we have a team as well. Uh, Lauren from Australia, who's here a lot, is, is a big part of the team and is real big in doing our graphics and our social media uh, stuff. And um, we have a friend, Stephanie, who we actually met uh, early on. She had submitted a, a Ripple Effect Challenge video um, where she shared a little bit of her story, and she's going to be on as well. And she's going to be here, as as will Kevin and I and the rest of the team. Our wives are both fairly involved, Lacey and Margaret, to really support. And this is a really collaborative effort. These are just some of the materials that we have. Um, there's a t captain's toolkit. Um, all this will be a um, available on the dashboard, but it's also available on our website under the film tab. So there's a you know really nice uh, instruction guide that tells some quotes and some various different things uh, um, about the film, which is a real good useful tool. You mentioned some of the flyers, so this will be continuing to update and do more of these. But this is a, on the site as a Word document, so you can just you know replace the date and the theater and all the details. Uh, um, with yourself and be able to, you know, print these out or, or share them via email. We also have some letter templates to reach out to, uh, you know, friends and family members, as well as letter templates to reach out to potential partners. Um, you know, just to reiterate, you know, the film is, is really, we've seen it from the beginning of, of a vehicle for the broader movement. And it's, been awesome so far just in the filming process of how many people we've met and Kevin's magnetism of, of bringing people together and people being able to really rally, uh, rally around the cause. And uh, Kevin, would you mind just touching a little bit on, on that aspect of things of, of really the kind of uh, the collaborative mission and, and really the team, the team ripple world uh, kind sure. of concept? Sure. So you've seen the messaging of the hashtag team ripple world and that came from the journey of the film itself. We traveled to six countries in the film 
that are not all prominently in the film, but they're in the film. We traveled to six countries in the film and we met with advocates from all around the world that are doing great work to help other people stay here and, and be here tomorrow, which is another hashtag. And, um, and in doing that, we met some of these emo most amazing individuals who are changing their communities, just like all of you captains are every day, which we're really grateful for. And in doing so, we, got able, we were able to tell parts of their stories in the film in a very beautiful way. One of the things that occurred is that we landed in Australia uh, kind of on a fluke, not knowing what we were going to find there. And we found so many advocates in Australia that were doing such good work and changing the game and being disruptive and, and, and really being the epitome of compassion and kindness uh, to their fellow human being uh, and helping them with suicidal ideations really stay here in a big way. And so we found these particular individuals in the film uh, in Australia, mostly young folks who were were um, uh, very excited to, you know, in, in their own mind, change the world. And they're actually doing that in Australia. They're changing the face of, of that nation through their efforts. Many of them are working uh, toward Aboriginal rights. Many of them are working uh, to reduce suicides. Many of them are having a, a tremendous effect. Uh, and we decided to share their stories. And this, this film is not just a journey about my story, it really is more importantly a journey about the global mental health movement and why right now is the time to share this message with a call to action. And that call to action, you'll see at the end of the film quite clearly. Um, one of the things we're making sure to do on a separate note is include crisis lines for every country the film is shown in that are applicable and even text lines and things like that to make sure that before and after every screening of the film, and because we're not repped by a giant uh, you know, distribution company uh, that is so massive they don't care about you, we're able to put those messagings into the showings of our films, which not a lot of films are able to do when they're picked up by a massive distribution company. They own a lot of those rights. So this is not just a movement to help people find hope. It's a movement to help people move to action to do something good for the people they love and care about in, in their world. So I, I hope that uh, explains it pretty well. Yeah, and, that, and, that, and that's really the ripple effect and really, you know, cool, a cool piece of this is, you know, the ripple effects of Kevin's story. And a lot of times people think about the negative ripple effects of suicide, which are tremendous. But for the film, really focus on the, on the positive ripple effects that can come out of that. A big piece of, of that being Kevin's uh, dad, which is a big element of the film, of him co-founding the Bridge Rail Foundation with other families who are also featured in the film, um, and, and then other individuals who've lost loved ones to suicide and started charities or um, you know, people who have that lived experience themselves. So for the screenings, we're just the collaboration is the key, Jake, Jake mentioned. So I, I have the privilege of working around the country in mental health with youth programming and also with some su doing suicide prevention summits, and Kevin does as well. But what I've always seen is, is the most effective projects and events are, are around collaboration or around bringing different agencies and organizations and individuals together who are passionate about a certain topic. Because a lot of times we work in, in silos and we maybe see people at meetings, but being able to rally behind a, a fun, social, empowering kind of event can really do a lot for a community to bring people together and spark more dialogue and collaboration around suicide prevention and mental wellness. So we really, you know, see in this film being able to be a catalyst for people to come together and watch a film, but for it to be an event. And after the film, you know, you can have that discussion, you can have that dialogue, and hopefully you can have some next steps that come out of this that then people are wanting to do other things and, and other activities. So really just encourage everybody if you sign up and we can really help you with this because we have contacts with a lot of the different agencies in the different communities, you know, the advocacy groups like the NAMIs or the mental health associations, behavioral health uh, organizations, um, you know, foster care organizations, schools, government agencies. So really building that coalition and bringing people together and maybe having a meeting to, to plan around it. And so people are really a part of, um, you know, involving maybe local celebrities or the government officials. Um, one just thing too is, uh, is, around considering daytime screenings. A lot of times, <clears throat> like when David showed the bridge in, in Arizona, the event was during the day, which allowed professionals and most agencies will allow their staff for, you know, for learning purposes to go to things like this during the day. So that might be something you would consider as well during the day. We also have, um, a, you know, abilities 
Obviously, there's some costs associated with the travel and aspects of things, but we do have, you know, Kevin who is traveling nonstop. So his availability is, 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 is fairly pretty limited, uh, as is myself. But both of us are, you know, hoping to get out into communities and, and be a part of some of these screens. But we have this whole Team Ripple world, as was mentioned, that we um, that are, you know, willing and able to get out into these uh, screenings and, and do the screenings, but also maybe follow up events or, or events leading up to that. So that's an opportunity as well. Um, just again on the fundraising piece, that's a really, really great opportunity for this. Not only, you know, you can add on for the tickets, but you can pretty much do anything within the screening room itself. So, um, you know, raffles, uh, pledge cards, merchandise sales, uh, you know, anything along those lines, you can really kind of get creative, um, creative with that. Um, and this is just a little, uh, you know, slide on te Team Ripple World of some of the, some of the people that are involved uh and lauren uh has even these top two or three of these four around on the corners uh are all captains they're all uh ripple uh team ripple world movie captains that have just signed up we have a facebook group and there's already about 60 captains thus far and and it's really uh you know it's just really emotional and powerful just being a part of that group and reading people's stories because we've asked people if they're willing to you know share why they're passionate about this why they want to do this and it's all you know individuals that have been personally touched uh by suicide in really kind of tragic horrific ways but they're really seeing seeing this as an opportunity to spread some hope and spread some some love and uh you know and, and memorialize in a way uh their loved one that they've lost and and lauren you can't really maybe see the words here but they'll be on the website has made these memes for people so she's asked the captains hey send me a picture and a quote and I'll make it into a, a meme for you, uh, you know, that you can use to promote your film or promote your thing. So, so that's a that's a really cool, really cool thing. Um, and so, uh, want to go ahead and uh, just real quick show you the show you the website as uh, as was mentioned. There's a tab here that has you know host a screening. Um, there's a link for U.S. screenings and international screenings, and those will take you to the links that. Uh, Jake shared, shared previously. Um, there's also all the promotional materials here under film or the promotional materials. Uh, and uh, you'll see logos, there's memes, there's flyers, there's posters, there's toolkits and all kind of awesome stuff. So, so it, it really does make it a, you know, a turnkey, so to speak, where the, really the work that's, that's on the captains is building that coalition and building that, uh, building that, group of of promoting the film and, and uh sharing it so um we're going to show you if i can <laughs> cue it up here just a short little uh a short little clip uh from the film and apologize it's going to be uh not the greatest because it's over zoom but uh you know it will give you a little bit of a of a taste of the film and then uh probably just going to do a couple you know a couple minutes and uh and then we'll open it up for some questions uh after that. Peering down to the looming waters below, right before I catapulted myself over the rail. They would have people believe, even today, that 1,600 people died off this bridge. It's not true. For all the bodies washed away to sea, never to be found. For all the bodies eaten by fish, because that happens to the bone. For all the bodies that go on the opposite side of the San Francisco side, that are found in, in the families that bury caskets with nobody in them. It's estimated by the Marine Corner that over 2,000 or even higher have died off of this bridge. My name is Kevin Hines, and this is my story. Exactly. And he was there for a different reason. And he opted to do my surgery and saved my back. Exactly. But, you know, it's just, 
everything came into play to help me live. Oh my God, this is oh, unbelievable. You see it. Oh, it's magical how it comes out of the fog. It's blowing my mind right now. You know, this is... <laughs> It would be nice for you to see the bridge underneath it in a positive light. In the water, after the fall in the water, I, uh, I thought I was hallucinating. I was, uh, right over there, right over there. I thought I could not have just done that. There's no way I just did that. This is not real. Water is not real. Me going up and down and swallowing salt water is not real. I'm not in this water. I did not jump off that bridge. It didn't happen. And that's when I just prayed. God, please save me. I don't want to die. God, please save me. I don't want to die. I made a mistake. So that's a that's a little uh, a little taste of uh, of the of the film uh, from the from the beginning. And uh, I don't know, Kevin, did you have anything you wanted to say before we open it up for uh, for some questions? Yeah, no, I'm just, uh, I want to say to everyone who's at, out of themselves onto the webinar today and to, uh, to Jake to, and hi, Greg. And, and of course we had David and John, I'm just grateful that you guys are rallying behind this effort in a very big way because it means the world to us. And we want this film to be seen, uh, by as many human beings on the face of the planet. And really the, the film, the film's crux is about how to overcome pain. Besides the hope aspect, it's really for people who are in any kind of pain, who are struggling in any way to find a light at the end of the tunnel. It's not just for suicide preventers or suicide uh, uh, potential speakers or even people who have lost loved ones to suicide. It's for all of them. And it's for people who are hurting inside to find uh, beauty in their lives again. Um, and I, and I, I, you know, uh, one of the things that has been asked quite a bit and, and, I, and I want to touch on it, um, it is that uh, people are uh, wondering about this safe messaging aspect of it. And as John said, and as David said, and as we're saying, it really isn't a film that's going to disturb uh, your efforts or, or, or your ideas of suicide prevention as it should be. We're very careful with language. We're very careful with the way we shot the film. And we're very careful with, the, with what we are put in the film. To, to pivot to it, I think another question that's been coming up uh, I've been seeing is people asking about if the theater in their city isn't showing up in the screening request form. Uh, that's absolutely fine. You know, that just happens sometimes depending on the theater and depending on the city. Uh, one of the big things is Gather Film support team is available and on hand and you can either go to uh, gather.us and chat with our support team via our, our, our chat support or send an email to support at gather.us and we'll share that, that email address and, and just send an email saying that you want to add uh, your theater. If it's not already the theater that you're looking for isn't listed, then um, our team will get it set up on uh who you know can can will work to connect with that theater and get it set up so you can host a screening there. But definitely, uh, if it's not listed or if there isn't a theater, then that that doesn't mean that that we're not going to be able to bring the film to a theater in your city. And uh, another thing I saw there as far as uh, scholarship tickets, you know, that's one of the things with sponsorship and reaching out to agencies. And I know um, I know in working with a lot of behavioral health agencies, they 
if you reach out to them, there's likely that they would sponsor tickets. So that's uh, that's something that really kind of comes into the to the captain outreach uh, aspect of things of building those partnerships and, and being able to uh, sponsor tickets. But we you know we will continue to to field questions and and uh, and you know via our website via Facebook. Please like you know reach out to us. Um, we're you know really excited to to really roll this out to everybody, and we're really grateful, as Kevin said, to everyone who's joined or had joined in so far, you know, and as the movement builds and, and, and people really can kind of, you know, see more of the message and see more of the, uh, more of the movement that they can, you know, really behind, get behind it. And so that. Thank you very much to everyone. We were, we're right up on our time limit. Uh, thank you for joining. Thank you for listening. Thank you for participating. I have just copied every single one of the questions onto a file. So I, we will be answering all of them. Give us some time. We've got a lot going on, but we will do that because uh, it's important, uh, all the questions we have not yet answered. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Be great captains, and welcome to Team Ripple World. We love you. Bye, guys. Thanks, Kev. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, everybody, for uh, tuning in. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.